Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I have a really neat product for you guys today. This is a frame. It is from Beta FV. This is the new Pavo 25. It's a ducted pusher style cinematic quad. And actually it's supposed to be basically an update to the old Beta 95X V3 or the 95X line of cinematic pusher quads that they have. This is the new Pavo line. And this is just the frame, but we're gonna build up an entire quad here in just a few minutes. It's a very, very interesting looking frame. Let's go over to the bench and see what comes in the box. All right, so in the box, off the top, we do have a very nice looking uh, instruction manual. Well, not really a manual, but you know, a pictogram of where everything's supposed to go. And we have all our pertinent specs there. I'm gonna put that guy aside. Here we have the plastic duct part. Now this is a big chunk of injected molded plastic. It does feel, I don't know, fairly sturdy. Um, you know, it's obviously, it is flexible, but um, it does feel tough. It looks like it's molded the right way in the right places. Here we have the carbon fiber frame. So this is basically what's gonna hold the entire guts of your quad. This is gonna hold your, your stat, your, this is gonna hold your AIO, your VTX, your motors. And when it's time to put this all together, it's gonna to go together kind of like so. Making it a very interesting modular design where serviceability has always been difficult on cinematic quads. I think this is going to be probably one of the easiest ones to work on. It looks like it's gonna be roughly six screws, one, two, three, four, five, and six to get the motors, electronics, and everything off of the frame, which this is kind of the, the consumable part because if you end up crashing or running into something, this is what's gonna take the beating. Uh, you'll be left with, you know, basically your entire quad here on this one piece of two millimeter carbon fiber. You do get your choice of colors for the bumpers. We have the black foam and the red foam. Uh, and you know, just like a lot of the other uh, pusher style cinematic quads, it, you know, it just kind of double side sticky tapes to the outside of the frame. And uh, the weird thing is this one didn't come with the double sided tape attached to the foam. Uh, it does look like it's separate in the bag. So I'm going to put them aside as well. It does come with a USB extension port so you can easily access the Betaflight on your flight controller if you don't have one that has uh, Bluetooth or anything like that. If you're just going to go with this typical USB connection, comes with an extension. It does come with a two cell programmable LED and it does come with this cable. This is for the Beta FPV SMO 4K camera. So this is a, a power and data connection to that camera. I don't have a SMO 4K, so I'm probably not gonna end up using that. I do have a couple other cameras that will definitely substitute for the SMO 4K. We do get a lot of hardware. We get bobbins and doodads and things like that. And then we have this piece here. This is, this is a pretty trick little piece of uh, kit that comes with this frame. This is kind of your stack spacer. So this is all CNC machined aluminum. It is beautifully, beautifully machined. And the idea behind this is after you install your, uh, your AIO, this is gonna go on top of the AIO, and then you're going to mount your, your 20 by 20 VTX of your choice. Uh, in my case, it's gonna be something DJI branded. Uh, to that. So it does keep everything nicely centrally located in the middle of the frame. It's good for weight distribution. And last but not least, we do get two Beta FV post straps. Here's that double sided adhesive for the foam bumpers. And we do get a few different TPU prints. Print quality looks very good. A little stringy, but nothing terrible. Uh, so we have our, our lipo mount, or our lipo strap mounts. We have our HD camera mount. So this is where you would mount your small 4K or your naked GoPro or something like that. Here is your FPV camera mount and it also is where your HD camera will mount is on top of there. And this is for the back. This is for holding your crossfire antenna or perhaps a Express LRS and your VTX antenna comes right off the top there. So far, the frame looks very promising. It looks like a very decent frame. And uh, talking to my rep over at Beta FPV, they said, basically, 
take your 95 XV3, take the guts out of it and slap it right inside of this guy and you should be good to go. But I, uh, I kind of gave away my 95 XV3. Patrons, right? What are you going to do? So anyways, uh, the Pavo 25, it's got a 108 millimeter wheelbase and they're recommending 1404 motors for swinging the uh, yeah, roughly two and a half inch props. They do recommend the Gemfan D63, the 63 millimeter tri-blade props. Um, and you're gonna wanna be running an AIO, um, kind of like one of the Beta FV 20 amp AIOs. You can run either analog or digital. In this case, I'm gonna be running a DJI Vista. The receiver is whatever you wanna put in it. Crossfire, Express LRS, Ghost, Tracer, FR Sky, whatever, whatever you want to put in there, whatever you can fit. Uh, it, you know, building up your own quad, you just kind of have to figure out where you're going to put all your components. The weight of this frame is about 60 grams, so it's not super heavy. It's not super light either, but I think it's going to strike a good balance between uh, strength and protection with this big chunk of plastic and the rigidity of having that carbon fiber main plate that uh, some of the other quads just don't have. And the wheelbase is going to be about 108 from center of, of the motor to the other center of the motor. So 108 millimeters here to here. So what am I going to use in my build? I am going to be using, obviously, the Pavo 25 frame. I'm going to be using the uh, Toothpick 405 20 amp BL Heli 32 uh, AIO. That's this guy right here. This is going to make a very easy, easy setup because there is not a lot of soldering that has to go on with this thing. For the video system, like I said, I'm gonna go DJI, and I have a naked DJI Vista, already pre-wired, and literally, this is just a plug and play setup on this flight controller. The receiver, you know me guys, gotta go Express LRS, I'm gonna rock the uh, Beta FEV um, light receiver. This is the one with the flat antenna, kind of the, uh, the newer version of the one with the flat antenna. Uh, I know I'm not gonna get the best range possible out of this receiver, but I'm going for light and kind of proximity. Uh, I don't think flying a Cinewhoop uh, long distance is really what they're designed for. Uh, there isn't a jack of all trades quads, guys. It's, they're supposed to be purpose built. And for the motors, I'm gonna be using the CC the Beta FPV 1404, uh, 4,500 KV motors. These are a T-mount motor and these will match perfectly with this frame. All right, let's head over to the bench and we'll put this thing together. All right, so this isn't really going to be a build tutorial. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of build it and kind of talk through my thoughts uh, while I'm putting this thing together. Um, so just hang out, follow along, and uh, you know, obviously when you build your own quad um, out of your own parts, you kind of you kind of get you know, you get more familiar with the with the parts of the pieces, the process, you know what you did to put together. Uh, and that's why I, I do like building, but sometimes, sometimes it's a little tedious and you just kind of want to fly. So that's, you know, nowadays the uh, plug and play and bind and fly options are super, super convenient and they're all built pretty well. It's, it's almost hard to uh, <laughs> recommend building your own because parts are so expensive now. Sometimes it's just cheaper to put together and pay someone extra 10, 20 bucks to put it together. And buy someone, I mean, you know, like bait FEV for buying and fly. So here I do make a small mistake. I, uh, I put the, the Vista on kind of 45 degrees off center. Uh, it's actually supposed to line up the same as the AIO, but uh, I catch this later on. Just, just don't, just don't make that mistake. Here, installing the motors, I very, very well could have just went with two screws per motor, but I figure uh, I might as well put all four in. But I think if I were to do this again, I'd just leave two of them out. I, I don't see it taking a, a beating and needing the extra strength of the extra two screws. And, you know, something like this where power versus weight is critical, probably could have, uh, probably could have gone with just two. And just making sure we still have a little, a little bit of flexibility and squish in there. So that's the flight controller I mounted. This centerpiece is really kind of trick. I like that a lot. 
Uh, I like the top plates recessed for these screws too. Right here's about where I realized that uh, I put the, the Vista on in the wrong direction and realized I had to peel it all apart and clock it about 45 degrees off to the side and uh, line it up with the AIO. But that center CNC machine spacer thing that Beta FEV includes with this is really neat, really makes, uh, really makes moving everything around really easy. And it all just kind of slots right into the frame. You gotta push a few wires around here and there, especially for that LED in the back. Uh, you could certainly forego installing that LED and really simplify the build. And that's literally the only three wires that are like individually soldered to the AIO, obviously other than the, the main discharge leads. Everything else is just plug and play. Literally six screws, that's it, caught it, six. That's all that holds the, uh, the plastic frame piece to the center part with all the electronics. It's super simple to work on. I did find installing these foam bumpers to be kind of tedious, but uh, it was actually easier than I thought it would be. I, I knew it was gonna be kind of difficult. Um, the hardest part was just getting the double-sided tape off of the, the stock that it came on. You just kind of center it up, push it down, peel the second side off and stick the foam on there pretty easy and if there's any adhesive hanging off over the edge you could just kind of scrape out your fingernail and peel it off all right there we go uh that's the the assembly it honestly isn't very difficult to build once you kind of you, know, you got your pre out pre layout where you're gonna put everything but uh the the center stacking piece that piece of cnc milled aluminum that really makes this go together very easily uh, probably, I mean, you guys saw where I made my mistake. I, man, it's a, it's a tidy little build. It's, it's pretty rigid. Um, and with the new Betaflight 4.3, it makes making a pusher so much easier because it can do motor mapping and direction changing all from the Betaflight configurator. So let's go throw it on the bench and we'll run through the configuration real quick. Um, this is not meant to be a, a, a tutorial on how to do it, but if you're gonna build one of these, um, it's something you're gonna probably have to need to figure out. Uh, the one thing I was a little disappointed with was this little guy. I was hoping that this would stay on the quad while, uh, you know, once everything was inside the, the, the canopy here, but unfortunately it doesn't really work that way. The idea is that you weasel this little guy in place here uh, whenever you want to work on it on beta flight. But uh, at least they give you some sort of option. It's better than nothing. But I uh, kind of wish it would have, I was really hoping it would have like extended out through that hole right there and been part of the uh, part of the frame. But eh, not a big deal. Let's head over to the bench. We'll get this thing set up. All right, so let's pull up beta flight here. I set the accelerometer. Now we do have the flight controller installed upside down. So, before I set my accelerometer, I'm going to go over to the configuration tab and I'm going to start messing with the uh, the gyro here. So we're going to do out of the box. It was a 270 counterclockwise. Let's do a 270 flip. And honestly, I wish I knew a better way to do this, but for me, it's mostly just guesswork to get it right. And that looks about right. So we're going to go and tip it forward, left, right. Back, y'all to the left, y'all to the right. All right, everything looks like it's going the right direction. Now I just need to calibrate that accelerometer. And 
you guys can't see is I just have it kind of hanging off the edge of my desk here um, until I can calibrate. There we go. Now I'm just gonna blow through the setup real quick here. You guys can kind of see the way I have it set up. You may want to match it depending on the parts you picked. Uh, so UR3 is gonna be my serial RX for my Express LRS. UR4 is my DJI MSP. We're gonna leave that like that. And that is all the UARTs we need to select. Drop down to configuration. We already set up our 270 flip. This may be different depending on which flight controller you're using. So don't go by what I'm doing unless you're using the same parts. Oh, let's give it a name. Pavo 25. Why not? Something really not creative. All right, let's disable this safety feature. Yes, it is disabling a safety feature. LED strip, air mode, OSD, and be good there. Motor beepers on, no GPS. And I always go back and make sure the configuration stuck. That's an old clean flight habit of mine. If you don't know what clean flight is, worry about it. It's okay. You don't need to. Uh, let's see. see any, anyway, let's see. We're going to do 500 hertz uh, ELRS. So we're going to go and do this guy here. Cinematic. Serial and separate RX. Single cell. Mm, sure, why not? Quick. Save. Presets. Very nice. Betaflight 4.3. I'm not gonna mess with any of this stuff quite yet. I'm gonna go down to the receiver. Fire up my receiver here, my transmitter. And unfortunately, this uh, this flight controller does not power the receiver off USB. So there we go. I am a TAER kind of guy. It's just an old habit. Modes, arm, there's my arming mode. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll do an angle mode. I don't know why. Angle mode. And beeper. There. Go back to crash. There we go. Arm, angle mode, beeper. All right, coming along real quick, real good here. Let's go down to the motors. Uh, I don't believe this has bi-directional D-shot enabled on it yet. Not to worry about it. We'll figure that here in a little bit. Uh, motors setup is reversed, but I know that this is not going to be right. So let's do um, let's do this, and we'll just make sure. We'll, we'll, we'll double check that we're spinning the right motor. So I'm just gonna spin one at a time. Spinning motor one is definitely wrong. So I'm just gonna stop there. So I spin motor one and I'm actually spinning motor three. So we're gonna do reorder motors. Yep, no props. Click on the spinning motor. That's this one, this one. That one, and that one, and save. Doesn't get any easier than that, folks. All right, let's just make sure this is right. One. Two. Three and four. All right, that makes life so much easier. And let's go with motor direction wizard. We'll start the wizard. Start spin motors. So I'm just gonna lightly touch the motor and see which way it's turning. Is right. Three is wrong, so we're gonna do that. Three is going the right way. Two is wrong. Click two. Now two is going the right way. And one is right, so we'll stop and close. And hopefully that saved it. Well, let's see.
And that's it. They're all spinning the right directions. They're all mapped properly. And for another video, setting up a bi-directional D-shot. It is a BL Heli 32 ESC. Maybe it has the firmware on it or not. I'm not sure. We can always find out real quick here. Select bi-directional D-shot. And I need to count the motor poles. I didn't check. Hang on a second. These are 12 pole motors. And we'll save and reboot. Back to the motors tab. And let's spin them up. I'm getting my RPM readout and I have no errors. So we do have bi-directional D-shot running out of the box. At least with this flight controller. OSD. What I always do is I save. I got default OSD. And I just go down to the CLI. Pump it in. So I have a saved default OSD for analog and for digital on a little uh, notepad. And that's pretty much how I like it right there. And unfortunately, DJI does not show everything I would like it to show, but is what it is. LED strip. Let's wear ordering mode. We have two LEDs. And let's function. I don't know. Color. Larson scanner. And save. And there we go. We got our two LEDs blinking away. We can change the color on that to something else. There we go. That's that. We don't have black box in this flight controller, I don't think. Mm. No. No black box logging, so not going to mess with that there. And that's it. She is ready to rock. This was a very, very simple build. A uh, little fiddly trying to fit everything under the canopy, but uh, it does kind of just all dump right in there. Betaflight 4.3 has made setting up a quad so stinking simple with presets and the motor functions that are built into Betaflight 4.3. Uh, you can't ask for an easier setup other than just having someone give you a CLI to dump in there. Uh, but let's get this out and give it a fly. Unfortunately, I don't have any props. We'll be here tomorrow. So till tomorrow, we'll see you in a bit. A few moments later. All right, folks, there you go. That was a quick view, a quick video of my Pavo 25, including a build tutorial, some beta flight goodies in there. This was a very enjoyable, very easy to build quad if you select the right parts and you're using all the nice new features in beta flight 4.3. Uh, it flew great with my naked GoPro Hero 6 on it. Um, obviously, you can use a small 4K. The only thing that I had to change is the mount that came with it didn't work with my naked GoPro, but if you had the small 4K, you'd be good to go. Uh, this quad is excellent. You can get this Bind to Fly from anywhere from about $225 all the way up to $384. So depending on the options you choose, analog, digital, Express LRS, and then I guess the other guys, I mean, who would want to use those? But uh, it's not that bad. This is certainly, certainly an upgrade to the 95X V3 that I had. It was just all plastic. That carbon fiber plate makes quite the difference in the build here. If you want to get a hold of the frame or one of these quads, click the links in the video description. They are affiliate links to Beta FEV. Thank you again, Beta FEV, for sending me this for review and to do the quick little tutorial on it. 
everybody who came and watched this. Thank you so much for sticking around. And as always, folks, stay positive. We'll see you next time. <laughs>